Welcome back. Now, often you start with a good idea. It might seem crystal clear at first, but when you put it to work, the cracks and fissures emerge in its surface and they cannot be ignored. It is often the secondary ideas, those less good ideas found in trying to address the cracks in the first idea that become the core of the work. The intention is to provide a forum for these less good ideas. All right, so these are the words of world-renowned uh, South African artist William Kendrich unpacking his latest project titled The Center for the Less Good Idea. Kendrich has brought together more than 60 actors, dancers, poets, writers, composers, musicians, visual artists, filmmakers and boxers together in a space to follow impulses. Kendrich has also roped in the services of theatre maker uh, Kaili Tom Gumeta, poet uh, Lebhang Mashile, choreographer Gregory Makoma, as well as the, uh, the curators. Well, one of them is here, which is theatre maker, creative, intellectual actor, playwright and director uh, Kaili Tom Gumeta, who joins us now. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Live. Yeah, morning. How are you Thanks doing? for having me. I'm good. I'm good. Okay, so what was your first thought when you were told of William Kendrich's The Centre for the Less Good Idea? I mean... What did you think this was? <laughs> well, um, I mean, it emerged from a conversation we were having at the time when um, uh, he, he, came, he came to see one of my plays and uh, then he finished on a, um, um, a movie with, with a very close friend of his, Angus Gibson, and we're talking about this, this fact that often when you start a process, it's clear, yeah. you know what you're trying to do because the idea is crystal in your head. But actually when you start making it, it that's, that's when you realize that all of these other ideas emerge within the creative process mm. that uh, started as less good ideas, but you become so fascinated with, so fixated within the making that you, you start following the impulse of those ideas and they often take over because then you have collaborators, then you have an opportunity to think very clearly with mm. those ideas then people influence them and shape them and what seemed like the main idea all of a sudden is displaced and you've got all of these other ideas that are far more interesting and far more creative as it were alright so here's your idea you guys are having this conversation how did it move from let's bring all these creatives together to, talk, to combine for something less of a good idea how do you guys get there I think, I think what the spirit of, of the Center for the Less Good Idea is, is about experimentation and collaboration and really allowing the process to take you where you want it to take you. Mm. And that's the bravery and the joy of working like someone with William Kentridge. He's like an artistic unicorn. Yeah. Uh, he's had such an incredible career and he's brought together all of these people that he knows and he respects that are prolific in their industries. We've got amazing actors like Hamilton Lamini, like Dan Roberts, uh, like Zetu Lomo, like Tony Miambo. So it's a, and, and then we've, we've got these curators who some of which um, have international reputations that are next to none mm. like Greg Makoma is actually still um, you know touring around the world not only as a dancer but as a director and obviously as artistic director of Yanni Dance you've got Lebo Mashilo has a prolific career and it's it's the joy of saying what happens when we put all of this in a melting pot and and allow the the creativity to bubble and explode and offshoot to create a series of of works that that could go in any direction the collaboration leads it so essentially you're saying there's no brief <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're saying no there is a brief what is the brief the brief is to explore the creativity amongst you so Lebo, Greg, myself, William and Bronwyn Lace sat down and we started with a series of ideas, mm. a series of experimentations that we wanted to put on the floor. Then you bring in percussionists, then you bring in musicians, then you bring in actors, then you bring in dancers, mm. then you bring in poets. And from the set of conversations and ideas emerge something more spectacular because all of a sudden now you've got people that are able to improvise uh, at, over a drum beat and you've got shadow projections that's happening here and you've got actors that are then inspired by that and then speak a poem over that from Lebo's perspective. Then you've got Anne who's this beautiful vocalist uh, that brings in this operatic quality that comes in and plays over this idea. Right. So, so really it was about experimentation and play and, and also bringing together some of the, some things that you don't always see. Yeah. I mean the first two days, the first and the second of March are a series of Beckett's um, that you often don't get seen performed in South Africa because it's short plays. So, so it's essentially, it's a jamming session for creatives. It's a jamming session for creatives. That's exactly it. what it is. <laughs> you see, that's right. where we should have started. <laughs> you know, then it's much simpler. When you're talking about all of these intellectual things, it's a jamming it's session, a jamming for, session creative for creatives. creatives. Okay, so now, talk to us about the workshops. I imagine here's your jamming session mm -hmm. and you're talking to all these creatives. Mm. 
what then happens in the season one? I know there's a season one. What happens yeah. there? So the season is curated between three spaces. Um, there's uh, William's main studio, then there's the centre itself, the centre for the less good idea, and then there's the Goethe on main space, all within the uh, Maboneng precinct. Just arts on main, people know it. It's a really trendy, fantastic spot. And we've put together a Biennale styled season right. uh, that now exhibits the best of what we that came out of our workshops by way of uh, the overlaps. So there'll be shadow projection in the ring, and then there are dancers that are dancing, while percussionists and other instrumentalists and vocalists are experimenting and that will form one part of a work. So the first two days will just be the Beckett's, the short place. Then from the th three to five um, uh, March is a mix of films in the Goethe space, of theater and dance performances in the center, of a mix of visual arts and music in the main ring. And, uh, you know, it closes with a big theatrical performance of The Trials of Brother Jerry Wallace Inca's play, which is, has got a 16-piece Tatamia group singing in there. So it's, it, it's really yeah. Uh, uh, you know, the program is set that you mm. have uh, short interventions from the best of what we were able to curate from the December workshops. All right. Yeah. Tom, thank you so much. Uh, Dominic Akailise Gumeta, we should c continue this conversation, but time is not on our hands. All right. <laughs> it's called, it's season one for the center of, for the less good idea taking place at the Maboneng Precinct in that square. If you know Maboneng pretty well, you know that that mm. little square there. All right. First of March until the 5th of March. All right. Let's take a quick app we'll go back after this stay with us failure to implement the water restriction is going to make the system not workable for the domestic use everyone should not exceed 25 kiloliters per day. What is the penalty and, and how much have you raked in thus far as a municipality? Uh, for domestic users, if they uh, exceed 25 kiloliters, then they're going to be charged a penalty on their monthly bill. And so far already we've collected 1.7 million. The 200 million rand state-of-the-art school in Mahalisburg had been vandalized by drug addicts. Now, how bad is it? It's very bad. In today, hostel residents, it was even worse mm. because uh, there the doors, the wardrobes, the beds, the ceiling were broken down. Showers were ripped off and uh, mm -hmm. it couldn't be used by, by, by students uh, who are actually using uh, that particular boarding facility. Yeah. There may be associated problem with the arteries of the heart in patients with hypertensive heart disease and in some instances it's just pure the muscle disease problem. The statistics show us that half the population of individuals with high blood pressure are not even aware that they've got high blood pressure. There's the amount of salt we eat because there's a big influence on our blood pressure levels. So using less salt when you're cooking, less salty spices when you're cooking, not adding salt to the table, but rather using other spices and herbs to flavor your food. And then of course how much sugar you eat is also very important. If you start becoming um, uncomfortable or where you feel that your effort tolerance is becoming less, mm. you can't lie flat, you run short of breath, you start swelling in the legs and so on, it's high time that one should consult a doctor. Join Health Talk every Saturday for all your health news. about what happens when we put our differences yes. aside and we come together as a human race. Salt makes its way out of the kitchen into the art studio. Normally you know salt is for food and stuff, but then here's salt. The past couple of months I've grown so much and I'm just ready to impart what I've learned to the next Miss South Africa. I wasn't expecting this. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm feeling so overwhelmed. For your weekly dose of entertainment news, tune in to Trends every Saturday from 12 to 1.
Welcome back. You're watching Morning Live. Thank you for staying with us. Now, this week, South Africa commemorated a historical event that not only took lives of our fellow countrymen 100 years ago in the United Kingdom, but left a permanent scar on our history. Most of the 646 men who were, were on the SS Mendy when it sank in February of 1917 were black South African troops. Enough reason for singer, guitarist, songwriter, businesswoman, extraordinaire, as in these words, they are quite to hold an event in their name and celebrate their lives the best way she knows how. A performance which will take place tonight at the Ditsong National Museum of Cultural History in Tuane will be opened by advocate Toma Bile Magnochwa, who will be the guest speaker. Sindiswa joins me in the studio. It's always such a pleasure to see you. We get to see you at least once or twice a year, I yeah, think so. Yeah, which is good. <laughs> Actually, you should make it often if we can. Okay, so talk to me about tonight's performance and kind of honoring a, uh, as I mentioned in the intro, something that's a permanent scar mm -hmm. uh, in terms of our historical um, references. Yeah. I, I think you know that this year we comm we commemorating the centenary of the event. This happened a mm. uh, hundred years ago, and it is one his history that is not known by most of the community. And I felt it is important as an artist to also do something about it. And so I composed a few songs specifically for the event, and then invited Advocate Sonobili Mangoja to come and speak. So it will be a combination of a musical performance and a, 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 a talk by, by the advocate. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, anybody who's ever heard your music know yeah. that there's so much emotion, so much power, and you're a lyricist of notes. Yes. So you said you've composed some of, uh, you've created new songs yes. for tonight. Yes. What was that process like? Was it quite emotional? It, was, it is emotional. I actually cry. I, I, I remember the band had a hard time to deal with me during rehearsals mm. because, you know, I had to stop at some point to deal with my emotions because this is a very touching issue. And yes, you are right. In terms of lyrics, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very specific. I... I, I always have to deal with things that hit deep yeah. into, into my heart and the, which are very relevant, which would mean something to somebody who would be listening. So the lyrics are very strong. They reflect what happened uh, the 100 years ago. I, I put myself there and here again today. I put myself in the shoes of the families, you know, that mm. lost those loved ones that time. And uh, I, I ask questions as well. I I, I try to give answers uh, the, the way I could as well. So, and they all come in a beautiful Afro jazz style, like I, mm. I, I do my music, yes. Yeah. You, you talked about putting yourself there and here, which also talks to me about that, although the music is reflective, it also has to inspire. Exactly, exactly. But because remember, it happened 100 years ago, mm. but it's still an issue that would live with us forever. Mm. I believe that it is an, a, a, it's something that should not be forgotten. And I'm happy that in the country this year, the commemoration was bigger than the other years mm. because the, the government did so much. But the other important thing as well is that we had so many books that are written about it. Uh, we, we have muse museums also dedicated to the issue. I think all we needed was songs by Cindy Swa, and they are here now. <laughs> so, yes, as my, my aim actually yeah. is to put an album together. So we are already talking with advocate Sonobili Magnojwa. Uh, to produce an album after after the show. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, so let's give away some details very quickly. Yeah. Uh, what time and is there a cost? The show, it is at Tidizong Cultural Museum in Pretoria, that is Kona Bosman and Fisaki. The tickets are 150 rent if you are lucky to still get them at web tickets and they are 170 at the door. And it starts at 8 o'clock. At 8 o'clock, so yes. don't, don't be late. Be on no, time. They shouldn't be late because 8 o'clock we start. On time? On time, yes. <laughs> My director wants to know if he's invited. Who? Everybody's invited. Everybody, everybody's invited, yes. Okay. Everybody's invited. I'm sure if my director comes, he'll be on time. I'll okay. be very Musician happy. and event organizer, <laughs> Cindy Sosako, is speaking to us about her live performance at the Ditsong National Museum of Cultural History in Tuane, where she will be commemorating 100 years of the sinking of the Mendi alongside advocate 
Tumambile Mngotwa of the National Heritage Council. He'll be the guest speaker. The event starts at 8 o'clock sharp. Tickets are 150 at Copy Ticket, or Web Ticket, I should say, and 170 at the door. So let's support this. Okay, let's take a break. Thank you. When cell phones get cut off, people say Mzuli was listening. Who are you? We have to approach uh, Dennis Breitenbach, who was the prosecutor by then. The, the DA uh, uh, parliamentarian? That's correct. The one who was speaking halabaloo about me. There are allegations here that you abused the slush fund. What do you say to that? We don't have slush fund. I don't know about slush fund. I respect the fact that you cannot talk yeah. uh, a lot about the Secret Service and all that. I guess that's the norm internationally. Yeah. But how do we know that yeah. you, Richard Mzuli, are not abusing the funds of the state? You are counted amongst um, the president's men. Uh, are you? That is rubbish. Also the matter of General Boysen in KZN. He's not speaking very well of you. No, that one is talking rubbish. You are perceived to be very powerful, General, and, you know, people who don't agree with you uh, seem to pay the price. What is happening with the old Param Kribe case? No, I'm surprised because, I'm, as I'm, I've said, I'm a person of people. SABC News brings the world closer to you. Sherman Bryce, please, SABC News, Washington. Jam I said, SABC News in London. News on the Limbejo, SABC, Esochi, Russia. I'm Sarah Kimani, signing off from Kigali for the SABC News. Other than